Get started. Um, good afternoon. My name is Phil Mesnier. I'm a uh, software developer with uh, Object Computing Incorporated. We're in St. Louis, Missouri in the US. And um, I'm going to talk today about how we've used, that's a little too much, uh, about how we've used um, uh, the uh, Steam software to create other uh, blockchain-based applications. Um, sounds like we're getting a little more feedback here. Try that again. Um, anyway, so this is sort of an outsider's view. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how I got into this and where, what we've been doing and where we're going. So first, this is me. Um, when I was 26, I was doing a, a little bit of skydiving. And the reason why I'm showing it to you today is because this exemplifies the way I've um, uh, been dealing with blockchain in the past year. I started out, um, it, you know, it's, it's a little exciting, it's a little bit scary. There's a lot there, a lot to do, a lot to understand, a lot to remember. Sort of okay. like letting go of a plane at 3,000 okay. feet. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been a fun ride. I'm always there. Okay. So my backstory starts actually one year ago today when this gentleman, um, you, some of you here may know him as Mod Pro, um, came to St. Louis and uh, attended our C++ meetup. And at the C++ meetup, he started talking about blockchain and particularly graphene and bit shares and steam it. And I looked at that and I said, this is really something I could get into because it had three elements going for it. It was open source, it's distributed, and it's hard to understand. So people, people will pay for consultants to do that. Um, and also at, at this meeting, this is a, a C++ meetup, mind you, and usually it's a pretty mellow uh, crowd, but um, uh, a lot of uh, Bitcoin enthusiasts had come to, to the meetup as well. And this was my first encounter um, with Bitcoin enthusiasts. And I'm sure some of you are, are uh, aware of the phenomenon, but they're a very uh, passionate bunch. And so this told me not only was it distributed and um, open source and, and hard to understand, but there's passion there. There's, there's real motivation and there, there's a future there. So, so that, that really got me going. So as my first exposure, um, putting myself out there, I wrote an article uh, for my company's little newsletter. It's uh, Software Engineering Tech Trends. And I don't write too many of these. In fact, many of you um, are probably wondering just who I am because you've never seen my post. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the phenomenon of, of uh, sort of stealth contributors here. But anyway, this particular article um, has been consistently one of the highest referenced set articles on our, on our page. It also got me introduced or, or exposed to many of the, uh, the Steemit um, uh, uh, elite who uh, contacted me and said, Hey, I saw your article, oh, nice job, and uh, we're going to watch you. So, so there's, there's that. So to write that article, I first had to um, analyze the, uh, the code. I had to learn what was in graphene. So at this point, I'm still not really w working with Steemit yet. I'm, I'm just talking about graphene. And I came up with this, um, this diagram, which I th that's a pretty picture because I use color. Um, but basically this shows all the different packages, libraries, executables, and, and other software packages that are part of the, uh, uh, the graphene um, code base. So when you hear people talking about witness nodes, this is the content of a witness node. Um, anyway, nice picture. So, there you go. So the next thing that I needed to learn about um, was smart contracts, because smart contracts are the things that make the blockchain work, that make the applications work on the blockchain. And so, um, 
with graphene, and actually I don't know if, how true this is anymore since we've been talking about app base. Um, my, my exposure to graphene is from a few months ago, which makes it ancient history. Um, but anyway, there's, there's three basic objects um, that have to be dealt with with smart contracts. There's the object, which is a data store. It's a container of whatever kind of data you're going to um, want to preserve on the blockchain. There's operations, which provide the API. That's the, that's the thing that um, application developers would then um, make use to um, access the data in the object or, or modify the data in the object. Um, and then finally, there's the evaluators. And the evaluators um, take the, the request from the operation and actually do the, the, the manipulation on the, uh, on the data. So you really need all three of these uh, to work together when you're creating a blockchain um, project. Okay, and so I, I, I couldn't come up with an interesting picture of uh, smart contracts. So that's my dog. Chloe, she's a smart beagle. And so, there you go. Okay. So, finally, after going through all this and learning all this and playing around, we got a hit. Um, you know, someone came to us and said they wanted us to work on a project. And I, I went for, um, you know, we were, we were pretty sure we were going to be using graphene. And we ended up using the, uh, the Steam version of that because the Steam version contains many additional tools and, and uh, helpful um, code that helps make you know, sort of the extra stuff that goes into a blockchain application uh, easy to do. Of course, it is open source, um, following the terms of the MIT uh, license. And MIT license is very generous. It gives users like me the ability to use that software in pretty much any way we see fit, except for declaring it as our own and trying to prevent anyone else from using it. Um, it also encourages sharing, which uh, eventually we'll do. We haven't yet because those guys are just moving light years ahead of us. Um, anyway, available from GitHub. Okay. So, what we've been working on lately is a project by, uh, for a company called Ripe.io, and they are producing the blockchain of food. So I'm going to talk now for a little bit about what blockchain of food is and how, um, and how it uh, relates to um, Steemit. Well, actually, the Steam, not Steemit. Okay. So Ripe's challenge uh, is, well, one of RIPE's challenges, is proving authenticity of, of data. So food producers are able to make any kind of claims that they want. You go into, uh, well, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, stores like Whole Foods um, or Costco, but you can go in there and you can find all sorts of organic stuff and free range this and fair trade that. But how do you really know any of that is the way it is. So that's the problem that, that we're trying to solve. And the way we do that is with something called the web of trust. The web of trust is, um, um, so, so the web of trust defines a collection of, um, of interacting uh, truth declarations and uh, assertion, well, it would be assertions and, and, uh, uh, and, and evidence and so on. And then they apply these, uh, these various uh, um, uh, elements to what they call food bundles. And food bundles are any sort of collection of, um, of food, whether it's a bushel of apples or a truckload of tomatoes or, or anything like that. Okay, so... Uh, the elements of truth in, in the uh, web of trust are, like I said, the assertions. So the assertions are anything that, uh, th these are the claims. So, so um, you know, a user of the system, a farmer, for instance, can claim 
to be um, um, using a certain standard for um, uh, sustainable or, or uh, organic farming. Then there, there's the evidence. So the evidence might be um, a certificate from some, from some uh, organization declaring that yes, this farmer is in fact using these uh, standards. And then finally, there's the uh, evaluation. That's, that's the, um, the organization, that's a secondary organization who is able to come in and verify that, um, that the, uh, the evidence uh, of the assertion is fairly placed. And these three things are the smart contracts or are implemented by the smart contracts as I mentioned um, a few slides ago. So these are, these are the things that uh, we've actually added to the blockchain. And in, um, in, with, the, with the graphene blockchain, when you modify it, you know, you're basically making a hard fork. And that's what we've been doing here. And we extend the, the core blockchain code to add these features and um, you know, have new uh, APIs for um, presenting those. Um, OK. So I have a little demo, but I'm too nervous about this uh, um, setup to, to show it. So I'm just going to skip over that and show you what I would have shown you uh, online. Um, Basically, this is the, uh, the, the um, a mock-up of the, uh, of the uh, user page that could show all the sorts of data that's stored in the blockchain um, related to food bundles. So we have up at the top, you know, what kind of food is it? A cherry tomato. Um, you know, what, uh, there's, there's uh, scores for quality and and uh, taste and so on, and, and all the way through. And so, so then you have data down here, which shows um, you know, how, how, the, uh, how the food gets delivered, and also shows that you can have negative data in, um, in there as well. So you know, for instance, this truck was supposed to be at a certain temperature, but at some point, uh, the temperature went out of, out of spec, and so it may actually uh, uh, affect the quality of the food. Okay, so that's basically what we've been working on uh, so far. And now I can talk a little bit um, about another project that's upcoming. Um, these, uh, this is a group called Unvig, and uh, they have uh, you may have seen on Steemit something called Sports Steam, which is a prediction market um, um, site. Um, at some point, uh, we'll be doing more with them, but uh, one thing that um, they did want me to mention is uh, they are looking at the smart media tokens um, for creating a token of their own which would be used to incentivize um, improvements on predictions. These are predictions on uh, sport, sport events. Um, you know, it could be, well, soccer or baseball or football or, uh, uh, or, or whatever, snooker. Um, anything that someone can uh, bet on. And, and so they, they want to use the uh, smart media tokens to create their own incentive platform for that. Um, beyond that, um, they're looking into building Steam uh, apps and bots uh, cheaply and uh, quickly using a scalable uh, cloud architecture. OK. So that's, that's pretty much my talk. Uh, some parting comments, uh, parting thoughts. I want to. Um, Give some gratitude to uh, the Steam team and Ned uh, for um, making uh, Steemit or making Steam open source and all the other uh, additional projects and being part of that com community. I also want to uh, thank Roland for uh, inviting me. And um, so my first picture was um, inspirational or was aspirational, showing me 
Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> right. So my first picture was inspirational. It was me jumping from an airplane, which I actually went on to do quite a number of times after that. Um, it was a lot of fun. But this is me driving a Lamborghini. And this is uh, uh, my, my Lambo. Uh, so um, this is aspirational. I don't own one yet. I only got to drive it for a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, um, uh, there you go. So one, one last comment before I ask for questions. I am also part of the EOS team. So if some of you may be um, involved with that and see my name. So don't be confused. Um, my company does many different things. And I sometimes do many different things as well. So if you saw me there, you're right. And I've worked with uh, Steemit. And I think I'm going to continue doing both. Any questions? Any questions for Phil, guys? Well, I'm curious. Was it, were you afraid to jump out of a plane? No. No? It's like... I was anxious. <laughs> I, was, I was nervous. Really? But I wasn't afraid. And did Chloe once join you with a jump? Oh, Chloe's not going to jump. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that in, in many, many years. That was, that was young me. <laughs> My son actually uh, started jumping. Though. Oh, he well, inherited the, the habit. I'm sorry? He inherited the habit? Yes. Corey. Thanks a lot for uh, well, giving the introduction. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, see you tonight. Do you play snooker? Or pool, um, I guess they call it pool. I'll oh, try. please say yes. And then we just try one together. Okay. Okay, cool. I, I, I used to throw darts. Okay, we have them as well. And that's how I met her, throwing darts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.